Greetings, fellow space travelers. This is Jaden Sage. Today, we will discuss orbital debris and the way forward. Humanity has finally mastered the art of pollution. Orbital debris is the omnipresent sign of our short-sightedness. We have diligently accomplished the goal of filling our land, our lakes, and even our oceans with our litter. We can now easily lay claim to the only species on planet Earth that has created its own continent in the Pacific Ocean, a continent of debris. With orbital debris, we will effectively have to fly through our own trash to enter the pristine emptiness of outer space. As we proceed further into enlightenment as a spacefaring race, we must find ways to not only fix our past debris situations, but mitigate our future debris risks as well. Orbital debris possesses outsized ramifications vis-a-vis -vis its size. Debris that is only a couple of inches wide can easily destroy a satellite or even the International Space Station. Traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, these miniature fragments can have devastating consequences to our space assets. Not to mention human life. And time is not on our side. Time is of the essence, as debris from future collisions will only cascade endlessly. When two objects collide, they can create thousands of smaller objects that then have even greater capability to destroy even more satellites. And to compound this situation, we are going to be adding thousands of new satellites in space in the near future, exponentially increasing the chances of collisions further. If we don't build a consensus on debris removal and future debris risk mitigation, we are creating a recipe of inevitable space collisions that will spiral out of control. Orbital debris removal sounds great on paper and even better in sound bites, but the reality is far more complicated. The impossibility of full removal is a foregone conclusion. There are a myriad of reasons why this is so, way beyond the technological hurdles. In fact, if technological limitations were the only hurdle, we would already be on our way. The biggest challenge is the human condition. Orbital debris cuts across financial, political, national, and security issues, which are the true underpinnings of the quagmire we face. The undertaking for any meaningful removal requires the coordination of many countries. No country alone will want to carry the burden as the expenses will be quite high. The concept of who will pay will lead directly into the political side of this conundrum. And as we all know, politics 
has its own rhythm and rhyme. Getting any form of consensus built around an endeavor that has limited tangible financial results will be close to impossible. The descent into whoever is responsible should be paying will be swift and unapologetic. If the parties most responsible choose to focus their efforts and funds on navigating through the debris rather than removal, then the entire conversation comes to an abrupt end. Nations, for a variety of reasons, can easily elect to not engage in the entire removal effort at all. The ultimate challenge is the double-edged nature of technology itself. Like the very first technology humanity harnessed, fire can cook food in the house or burn down the house. From the most basic technology built to achieve debris removal goals to the most advanced technology, we'll be able to extract not only debris but another nation's satellites as well. These active solutions will effectively reduce trust in any technology or nation down to zero. We will be swimming through a minefield of high anxiety and low trust. Not a great place for nations to be in. There are also some passive solutions such as orbital decay. In this solution, we rest at ease knowing that in time the space junk will just burn up in our atmosphere. However, resting our laurels on orbital decay will be insufficient as thousands of new satellites and potential new collisions will create endless new opportunities for yet even more collisions. Exotic solutions such as modulation tweaks of Earth's magnetic field would create a slew of unintended consequences which we cannot anticipate from the simplest to the most complex. The solution will not be led by technology. The actual solution will be legislative in nature. Only then can technology play its janitorial role. Our only way forward will be to treat orbital debris with the same level of respect and seriousness that we assigned nuclear weapons. We will need to walk through the painful process of building the minimal level of trust that will suffice to achieve our common goals. It is precisely when negotiations are at their lowest point is when commonality breaks down the barriers. However, this process will neither be easy nor swift. It may take decades. But with sufficient focus and many mutually agreed upon treaties, we may be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. As the space economy grows and becomes more valuable to Earth, the painful steps will have to be walked. We will take the necessary steps out of foresight or sadly come together after tragedies. Either way, we will have to eventually take a seat at this table 
to build upon agreed strategies, technologies, and most important, trust in order to achieve our common goals. The longer we delay, the more painful the process will become. Hopefully, we will all engage with each other in meaningful dialogue and let our foresight lead our way before we let tragedies be our guide. Humanity's greatest tests lead us to rise above our own interests for the continuation of our species. For it is only when we see the problems of others as our own do we let our greatest aspirations guide us to decisions that serve not our fears but our greater desire to seek a better tomorrow for all of humanity.